What is going on guys? Welcome to your 19th HTML5 tutorial and this is actually my first tutorial since I moved to New York. For those of you guys who were watching before you knew that I used to live in North Carolina and then I moved up to New York a couple weeks ago. Actually I think like a week ago today in fact. And uh, so yeah the move went well. I didn't get in a car crash or anything so I'm ready to start making some tutorials again. So let's jump right into this. In this tutorial I'm just going to talk about all the leftover stuff that I kind of left out when I was talking about the flexible box model. So after this tutorial, you're going to know everything about laying out the flexible box model. So let's see where we picked off because I know it's been a while. Okay, so obviously by this little website, we've been talking about the WebKit box flex property, which means say you had three boxes of a fixed width and you had one that was box flex one, it would just say, okay, take up all of the available extra space. So what it would do is it would add all these and see how much space it had left over in the parent and it would just give this that much space. So actually, this uh let's see what property this width property you don't even need it anymore and actually what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be deleting the width property for all of these and i'm going to be giving all of them a box flex property of one so delete this paste that in its place delete this width paste in its place and the reason we don't need the width anymore is because it's automatically if i show you guys actually it's automatically going to figure out the width of the parent and then figure out how it can evenly flex all of these to give them all the same share of the pie. So I know this parent is like 700 pixels wide, but say this parent was a thousand pixels wide. What it would do is it say, okay, I have four kids and since they all have the same box flex value of one, I'm going to flex them all 250 pixels. And yes, I know that we have margin and paddings as well, but I'm just giving you guys an easy example. So here is what you know already. You know that there's a box flex property of zero whenever you're working with fixed width. You also know one to make it flexible. But did you know that you can have a box flex value of anything greater than one? For example, two, three, five, whatever you want. And you're saying, okay, that kind of just blows my mind because I know that, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I got a hairball in my throat. I know that zero makes it unflexible and one makes it flexible. So what the heck would two do? Well, let me go ahead and give you guys an example. Let's go ahead and pick on kid number two. I hate kid number two. So if we go ahead and save this, we can see that, okay, kid number two kind of grew a little bit. So what's going on is this. You know how I told you guys if the parent was a thousand pixels wide and you had each of these with the property of one, then it pretty much says a thousand divided by four since you have four kids equals 250 now I didn't explain that to you guys because I didn't think you guys could do math I explained it because of this whenever you have four kids with the even box value it divides it evenly however since kid number two now takes up two spaces what it's gonna do is this think of it like this this number right here says how many spaces do you want to take up so this one takes us up one, this one takes up two, this one takes up one, and this one takes up one. So now if you add them together, one, two, three, four, five. So now it's gonna say a thousand divided by five, each space has 100 pixels. So this one takes up, excuse me, 200, 200, 400, 200. Or you can think of it like this as it's easier. Whenever you have a box flex value of one and two, the one with the box flex value of two is gonna take up twice the width of one. And three would take up three times the width as one. That may be an easier explanation. So let me go ahead and change this back to one. And now what I wanna do is, I wanna show you guys one last example. And this is the last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about concerning uh, the flexible box property. So say, okay, we need to change or give mommy a height. So say we have a height of like 300 pixels. Height equals 300 pixels. So mommy is 300 pixels tall. For some reason, that's how tall we want our website. And now we say each kid has a height of, I don't know, 100 pixels. So let me just go ahead and change this right here. So go ahead and give each kid 100 pixels. And this one too. And of course this one too right there. And what we're going to do is go ahead and save this, refresh it, and take a look at it. 
So now we're laying on our website. Okay, that's how tall we want. It looks pretty good. Yeah, this is how tall we want the kids, but I don't know. Like maybe we have an article and a picture here and an ad right here or something stupid. You say, okay, uh, this website is looking pretty good, but I wish these could just uh, move down a little bit in the center because they look kind of weird when they're jammed up against the top there. Well, what we can do is we can add a vertical alignment in the web or excuse me in the flexible box model and it's not vertical align like before you add this property whenever you want to vertically align the crap inside your box it's webkit and this is going to change whenever uh, browsers start adopting this but for now when you're using chrome it's webkit box minus align and it has a bunch of values for now I'm just going to show you guys center real quick whenever you center this think of this right here is saying vertical align property vertically align everything in my box hmm that's kind of a yeah anyways so anyways just <laughs> go ahead and uh, center that and as you can see since we added that center align property it's center aligned vertically up and down everything inside the parent box so as you can see now all of these kids are in the center vertically again I'm not talking about horizontally vertically can't stress that enough and actually it isn't top center bottom it has a bunch of all uh, let me think of the values star end center baseline and stretch and by the way everything by default is stretch so if you don't mess with it at all um what it's going to do is and if you don't get it a fixed height like this what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and let me go ahead and delete these heights the reason it's not stretching is because I gave it a fixed height but if I get rid of that by default in the flexbox model everything is set to stretch so now I should refresh this and if I don't look like a fool everything is stretched out perfectly so that's the default value but again star is like the top and the end is the bottom you'll figure it out so anyways that's all the time I have for this tutorial in the next tutorial we're gonna get away from the flexible box model because I'm sure your brains are as packed full as much flex box model info as you can handle so anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial